Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about sound, uh, program, and text objects. And um, in this lesson, you'll learn how to use the program object to manage how small basic programs run, uh, enable playback for sounds using uh, the sound object, and then uh, performing text-related functions uh, by using the text object. So when you create programs and work with various objects and operations uh, that Small Basic offers, you can manipulate how your program runs if you use the program object. So to better understand the program object, let's look at this example. So I have a couple lines here. We write a line that says program directory plus, and then there is a program dot directory. And then the next line will say this program will run for 10 seconds and then we do a program delay and then the program ends. So in this example, you use the delay operation to set a fixed time delay for the program to run and you cause the program to stop running by using the end command. And so basically what you get on your screen is when you run the program, it'll say program directory and then it list uh, what program is running at that particular time and then it'll tell you this program will end in five seconds. So by using the program object you can also retrieve information about the arguments that are passed by the program. So let's look at an example uh, to understand how you can use the program object to determine the count value of arguments that are passed to the program. So we have some code here and basically what the code does is it lists what the first number is and uh, shows it on the screen and what the second number is, but when you read the program itself over here, um, what you'll see is that the, um, the, the line is calling on the program argument at that time. Uh, so, uh, for example, this is what the command prompt looks like, and this is what the uh, program will show. It'll say first number equals, and then whatever that argument is at that time, two. And then uh, the second number equals whatever our argument that we've put in at that time is three. And so then it'll, uh, we ran a little program there that does uh, multiplies the two numbers, and then it's basically the end of the program. Um, so, well, I kind of skipped past that. So you could rewrite the program to say, please enter in two numbers to be multiplied, then hit any key to continue. So you could do that. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is the sound object. So if we are, um, after we work with arguments and use the program object, uh, we can look at something like called the sound object. So you can work with sounds in your program by using sound object with the operations of play, pause, and stop. Um, did you know that you could include sounds in your small basic programs? In fact, you can choose from sample sounds provided in the small basic library, or you could call them right from a location uh, in the um, from your hard drive. Whoops. So here where it says uh, file path, if I create a variable that says file path, when I hit sound.play, it'll play the file path. Now preferably you would like to have what we call a wave extension. I haven't played with that yet. I don't know if it does mp3s or wmfs and stuff like or wmvs which is the Windows version of uh, media. It stands for Windows Media uh, video and there's Windows Media Audio which is WMA and WMV um, but I know Wave works and so if you have a file path or a, a file that is um, a sound file on the hard drive uh, by letting file path equal and then you, you type the file path itself then when you hit sound play it'll play it there. Program delay will delay for two, 2,000 milliseconds or two seconds you could pause uh, the sound and then you can uh, delay uh, and hit play again. So what this will do is it'll begin to play the chimes, then it'll pause for two seconds, and then it'll play it again, and then it'll delay for five, uh, well actually about a half a second, 500 milliseconds, and then it'll stop playing the sound altogether. Um, now you can uh, if you look at an example and understand how you can play specific sounds like a bell ringing or a chime or a click by using certain operations of the sound object in your small basic program, um, then you can do what we call play and wait. And so to the left we have a program here where it lists the chimes file 
and then uh, we use the up command and uh, actually that's a, a, a subroutine and so what you would do is when you start this routine it would say program dot delay 1000 milliseconds then it plays a bell ringing then it delays for a second uh, then it plays the chime right because that's what it's told to do and then it delays for a second and then it plays a click and then it says play and wait file path and then it'll play and wait so in this example play and rate uh, play and wait operation plays an audio file and then waits until it's finished playing so you can't interrupt it it just plays until the file is complete and then once it's done it moves on to the next line which would be go to up so then this is kind of like a four next loop kind of um, this program will play a sound of a bell ringing, a chime, and a click at regular intervals. Um, next is a text object. We've talked a little bit about those, but for small basics, uh, text objects and their operations um, do different things. But for example, if you want to convert all names to uppercase letters, you might want to search for a specific information uh, within a text. You can use the text objects and its various functions and methods to perform op operations on text in small basic. So, uh, for example, you can determine the length of a text string by getting the length, that's another, like how many letters are in it. Um, and then the other thing is, is you can learn more about the operations of the tech text object by reviewing the example. So here, we have a small program. Uh, you enter in your first name, it stores whatever you enter in under the variable first name then you say enter your last name it stores that under the variable last name then you create a third variable complete name and all that does is it assembles your your first name and then your last name and then it goes name in uppercase now what that will do is it will convert every letter in uh, the variable complete name to uppercase and then it'll say hello and then it converts everything to uppercase um, which is nice because uh, you notice here that when they entered it in, they entered in John with a lowercase and then Smith with the uppercase. And um, it says, uh, enter your last name. Now, can, uh, get a little ahead of ourselves. You could actually do like an array uh, where each letter of the person's name is entered in and then the first letter goes uh, in the array could have all caps. And that's far more complicated. Um, but this is what this is kind of similar similar to how more sophisticated programs will automatically capitalize your first letter of your name when you go to enter it on a website or something. Uh, but in this case, it just switched the whole thing. Uh, so this is the first name. This is the last name. The third variable is complete name in all caps. Okay. Um, there's some other stuff you could do too. So like in this example, you can uh, ask the user to specify an email address. Then you can use in subtext operation of the text object to determine whether the email is valid or not. And um, basically what it does is that you're looking to see if they put the at symbol. That's it. Um, and then at another point, um, M basically you're looking for an at symbol and the period so when it says enter in a valid email address uh, you store whatever the person types in the computer under the variable email ID then we're going to search the in subtext the email ID for a period okay M is going to hold a value of true or false N will hold a value of true or false so if it has a period then M is true N looks for the at symbol. So if it has the at symbol, then it's true. Now, this is great because sometimes people forget the at symbol or they'll forget like gmail.com or um, microsoftlive.com or whatever. They forget um, the either the dot or the at, and then the email doesn't work. So this is a quick, simple program. And then it, in the last couple of lines, what it does, it'll say if M is true and N is true. In other words, it has a period and an at symbol then it'll say you have entered a valid email address and then if it doesn't it says you have val you have entered um, or it asks you again to please enter a valid email address and it completes the loop again and then this is what it'll look like on the screen
Okay, another operation of the text object is the get subtext, and this operation takes three parameters, the text from which you want to derive the subtext, the location from where you want to derive the subtext, and the length up to which you want to derive the subtext. So here are some more uses of the text object. Um, to determine whether given text starts with a specific subtext, you can use start with or end with. Uh, you can get the character code from a specific Unicode character by using get character code operation. And to determine the index position of a specific subtext, you can use the get index of operation. And so you could, uh, here's an example, you know, like text starts with and then text one comma A or text one comma Z. Uh, for the character code, you could uh, get the character code of the at symbol, and um, and that would pull up the specific Unicode uh, character. And then you can get code, uh, you can get uh, get index of, and then uh, the variable text one, and then the at. And so to summarize, you uh, you should know how to manage your programs, um, uh, how to uh, manage how your program runs by using the program object, include sounds by using various operations of the sound object, and operate on text by using the text object. And so I've got a little challenge for you guys. Um, maybe you can write a program that does the following. Ask the user to type an answer to a simple question. If the answer is correct, display an appropriate message along with the sound of a chime. If the answer is incorrect, display an appropriate message along with the sound of a bell. And that's pretty much it.